Hello, my name is Dawn Patrell of Art at Dawn, and today is my last video that I'm um, taking of um, a series of videos that I've created for um, a virtual op uh, studio open house. Um, and so today I'm doing a question and answer session. Um, I've been collecting questions from people all week about my art, my process, and about me, um, and I'm going to try to answer those questions. So um, let me just start, um, I guess, just a little bit about me. Um, I um, am living here in Columbus, Ohio, um, and I have three kids, um, and, you know, living with my husband, my three kids, and my dog, and um, I'm here in my home studio, so I have a, a studio um, in, um, above our garage <laughs> at our house. Um, and it used to be the, the kids' playroom, but um, when I um, when I got older, I, I took it over and it became my studio. And it's been such a joy to me, um, especially during this pandemic, um, with everything that's been going on. It's been kind of a sanctuary for me. Um, but you know, even beyond that, um, just a place I can share um, my work as well. Um, I've had classes in here. I've continued to have. Um, couple of um, students who are, um, you know, uh, it, it, private private lessons with them. Um, I've done wine canvas classes here. You know, a lot of this is pre-pandemic, but um, I'm hoping in the future to be able to share it again. So, um, and I, um, I've always been interested in art. I've always loved to draw. Um, but it wasn't until middle school that a um, a middle school teacher encouraged my mom to sign me up for an art class in the summertime um, just to get a little extra practice because um, he saw that I liked to, to do art and I did and that's where I really fell in love with art. I really found that I was good at it, I, you know, it came easily to me and um, it was a lot of fun and I never looked back after that. So um, I eventually went um, to school at the Cleveland Institute of Art. Um, Cleveland, Ohio, um, for illustration um, because I felt that it was a safe job. I did, I did, loved, I did love illustration and looking at illustrations and what illustrators did, and um, you know, I, I thought, well, I could do that. Um, so for a while um, afterwards, I was a freelance illustrator. Um, then um, had kids, and things kind of, you know, kind of was concentrating on on them more than anything. Um, and so it wasn't until my daughter was um, going into kindergarten that I um, decided to get back into my art career again. Um, but this time, I didn't necessarily want to do illustration. I didn't necessarily want to do art for clients and other people. I wanted to do it, do it for myself. And I didn't know what that looked like, but um, I was willing to try. So that was... Um, almost 10 years ago now um, when I created um, Art at Dawn and, um, you know, uh, and um, I just, you know, things kind of gradually took off from there. So, um, and they're still, they're still, you know, gradually progressing. You know, it's, it's, it's always a, a work in progress. I'm a work in progress, but I so enjoy it um, and I so enjoy sharing it with everyone. So one of the questions I have is um, when did you start embedding objects in your painting? And did something in trigger or inspire you to do that? And I'd say yes, yes. Um, so when, um, when, I, um, when I started to get back into my art, I decided to take um, an acrylic painting class just to get kind of get start to get my chops back. And um, I took it with um, a local artist, Vivian Ripley, which some of you might know. Um, and um, actually, I have a painting that I did during that time, which I'm going to show. It's a large painting of um, a kind of a seascape. And it has um, my husband and um, daughter in there looking on on the water. And um, how this triggered um, using objects and texture is that, um, you know, to find something that was large enough, I, was, I used a board that I had already had created something on previously. I mean, some old artwork, 
actually, um, it was when I, I went, I did go to graduate school, um, oh gosh, in 2000, 2000 2001, I, w um, I went to graduate school at Wesleyan University and um, took some classes there. And this is an old piece um, from that era. And um, so when I painted over it, it had some texture already in it. And I kind of used that in my, my painting. And I really enjoyed that. Um, so later on, I remembered that. And I thought, well, why don't I create that texture in the gesso, which is the, the priming um, paint that you do for, you know, before you do the paintings. And so I, I started to create texture before I did my paintings. I really enjoyed that. Um, later on, I thought, well, why don't I just stick a couple of objects in while I'm creating this texture? So I'd stick a couple of coins in and just some things. And I found that I really enjoyed that too. So that was kind of my gradual progression. I mean, this is probably over a year or two of, you know, of, um, you know, and evolving from there um, to where I am today, um, you know, of, 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 you know, purposely embedding those objects in and incorporating, incorporating them into my paintings. So, great question. Um, another question I have is, um, how long does it take you to create a painting? And that is a great question. <laughs> it's not an easy answer. Um, I can't say that I um, that I I go ahead and uh, go from start to finish. You know, start start one day and start a painting, and by the end of that day, it's done. That does not that never happens. Um, first of all, um, when I do the the first gesso part and I embed the objects, um, that always takes about 24 to 48 hours to dry. So you know, I start that process. A lot of times. I'll start a bunch of canvases like that all at once so that I can get out all my objects and, and put them in. And, you know, a lot of times I have kind of an idea of what my paintings are going to be so that I can kind of start to place, um, you know, and, and sometimes I, 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 I do that right before I do a painting. So I, I'll, I'll place it strategically, you know, so I don't do, you know, sometimes it's the mass thing, right? right um, in front and sometimes it's that particular painting I just wanted things in a particular way um, so that's about 48 hours of, of drawing time and then you know there's the preliminary drawings there is um, you know I start it up I you know it's it's, it's kind of a gradual thing <sighs> maybe depending on the size maybe 20 to 30 hours um, I've never actually um, I've never actually kept track, but maybe I should just to have a regular answer. So that's a great question. Um, but yeah, it's it's never like you know probably I'll do something over a couple of weeks um, and sometimes over a month or two um, is, is how long it takes me to do a, a, a painting. Um, drawings and my sketchbooks can be anywhere from 10 minutes to a couple hours. Um, and sometimes I'll start a, a drawing and go back to it you know, later on. So um, that can change too, but th they, they don't take me as long. But sometimes they, they you know, depending on how detailed it gets, it can get a little bit more. Um, okay, another question is, how do you remember an idea if the inspiration hits you when you can't write it down or sketch it on the spot? And that's a great question. Um, and I get I get inspiration all the time. I mean, I might be riding my bike and or in the shower, or you know, um, going on um, Facebook or Instagram and see something else, and that sparks some ideas. Um, a lot of times, I'll utilize um, the notes app on my phone. I'll just jot down some notes. Um, sometimes I'll say if I'm in the car, I might say. Siri, write a note, <laughs> and then and then I'll I'll say my note um, that I, I want to remember it. Um, sometimes I take screenshots of things that just spark an idea, and I want to save that. Um, you know, I'll I'll put things in my I have um, a sketchbook that I carry around in my purse, and I'll jot down ideas like that. Um, yeah, I just try to capture those ideas when I can, when they when they hit me, and and in um, 
you know, a way to do it. So, um, but yeah, I, inspiration can come anywhere. You know, it can come, you know, walking my dog, it can come talking to somebody, you know, yeah. Um, and I think the trick is to just be open to that inspiration happening. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, another question I had was, where did I get the black stools in my studio? <laughs> so if you see um, over in, if you saw uh, my studio tour, and I can't remember if it was like my overall sto studio tour or if it was the one where I kind of went into the nooks and crannies, um, but um, someone was asking me about the black stools that were stacked up over by my mask area. Um, I believe I got those from um, Home Goods, which is kind of like a a store like TJ Maxx, um, and I found them, and I was going to be doing, um, I think, a, a birthday party or something, and I needed some extra stools, and so I, I grabbed a bunch of those, and those are so handy because they, they stack. Um, and just a general note about, you know, kind of the, the furniture in my studio and my bins and things like that, I do not spend a lot of money on these things. You know, some things I found, I found my, my great desk, I love my desk, it's huge, it's like this industrial, like lime green desk. And I found that at Goodwill, you know. And um, I think my file cabinet I got from a yard sale. Um, I created a paper bin out of IKEA parts. Um, I got my tables from oh one of those sites where you um, you know people are exchanging furniture, and some um, office was was getting rid of them. So I got three of them. I have two in the middle, and I have one over on the side, over by my um, canvas uh, painting party paint. Um, and then I have extra tables from um, Costco that I'll, I'll put up um, if I'm doing a party, you know, I'll just kind of add those to my two tables in the middle. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, got, I got some shelving from, from Lowe's, you know, so yeah, I do not spend a lot of money on my, um, on my furniture, um, you know, I just, um, you know, try to find sales or, you know, when, when a need arrives, I, you know, look, look for, um, different options. So, um, that's a great question as, as well. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, okay. I had a question from someone I know, um, and she was asking if my painting free fall which is this one right here, which is in my studio sale, um, if there's a little girl in the water. And I did not purposely add a, a little girl to the water, and I don't know where she's actually thinking about, but I love the fact that she saw a little girl in there. <laughs> so, um, you know, but sometimes I do hide little things in my in painting. I, I mean, I told you about that um, Life Among the Weeds, and actually, the painting right behind me, um, in, in a corner, right over here, there's a little animal in there. And if you look closely, you'll see that. It was kind of, as I was painting it, I, I kind of saw this animal. And I was like, well, why don't I just kind of embellish that? So, you know, once in a while I do hide some, um, once in a while I do hide some um, animals and objects in my, in my painting. So, that's a great question. Um, I didn't purposely put a little girl in the, in the water, but, you know, I'm glad that you see it. So, um, and I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, okay. <laughs> this is from my daughter. Um, I, I did a question on Instagram. Um, yeah, is that, is that the one? Okay. I did a question on, Insta on an Instagram story, you know, just asking um, if, if anybody has any questions about my art. And my daughter <laughs> wrote in and she said, am I your favorite child? <laughs> so, uh, Emily, um, you're my favorite daughter. You're not my favorite child. I don't have a favorite, but um, thank you for asking. And actually, that leads me to something else that I w wanted to kind of do a shout out on for my daughter. Um, and this is something I forgot to do on my studio tour, but behind me in this area right here, I, this is usually covered up with, with canvases, but this is actually, when this was a playroom, this was um, a, a little um, mural that she, that she drew as, as a little girl. Probably like, what, three years old, two, three years old, she drew this, and it's, like, it's supposed to be a family portrait. 
um, which is, yeah, so sweet. I mean, you know, yeah, you're not supposed to be writing on the walls. And she, and she I think, um, I wasn't the one that found her. My husband found her. And when he found her, she was all happy and proud of herself. And then she kind of realized what she did, and she just kind of like, you know, no. But, um, you know, so sweet. And so I actually put a frame around that. And, um, well, I, when I painted over my studio, I didn't paint that area. And then I put a frame around it so that we can keep that forever, or hopefully for a long time. So, um, yeah, so that's a little tribute to my daughter um, in my studio. And um, so also, um, another question was, who is your favorite artist? This is a very hard one for me, too. Um, I, I get inspired by so many artists. Um, when I was growing up um, and started to get into art, um, one of the first artists that I fell in love with was Marc Chagall. And um, so Marc Chagall, to me, is kind of like comfort food. You know, I'll, I'll look at his things, and it just kind of brings me back. And I still love his work, um, very whimsical and colorful. and. Um, so, yeah, I'll always love, I'll, have a, I'll always have a fondness for, for Marc Chagall. Um, also, uh, George O'Keefe, I really liked her work growing up. Um, and like Degas and uh, the Impressionists, I really enjoyed um, that, that kind of work. But as I got older, I was exposed to even more work and collected even more favorite artists. Um, I guess some of them are um, Wayne Teabod, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, he's done um, like paintings of like uh, cakes and and you know objects, but then later he did um, these um, paintings of, um, of of like landscapes, but looking looking down on landscapes and they blow me away. I'd love to actually. I've, I don't think I've ever seen one of those in person. I'd love to see one of those in person, but. Um, Richard Diebenkorn, I love his, his, his painting style and his colors, and Rothko as well. Um, so, um, a, a local art, well, like, a, a, she's a local artist, she's unfortunately dead now, um, but she got national acclaim, is Amina Robinson, and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that um, I recently went to see an exhibit of her, well, yeah, at the, at the um, Columbus Museum of Art and uh, re also recently at the Branch Roberts Gallery in Columbus. Um, they they kind of are doing some retrospectives of her work and <sighs> I, just, well, I just love her stuff too. Um, but, you know, um, I love Instagram because um, I follow so many different artists and they inspire me and I love to just look at work and follow artists that I admire and I you know I um, you know so artists and illustrators and sketchbook artists and photographers mixed media artists um, there's just so much talent out there and so many people doing amazing things and I get inspired constantly and I'm constantly my, my camera roll is full of me taking screenshots of things that inspire me. <laughs> So um, I need to figure out how to put that in a folder and save them. Um, so yeah, and, and anybody can become an, you know, any, anybody that's doing some sort of mastery of their craft um, can be an inspiration um, or, you know, just something that you're thinking about and, and that, that just kind of sparks something else um, in your work. So um, yeah, I, I have a lot of artists that I admire and, and love and even I should shout out to a local artist um, here in Columbus. We have a, a really, really great um, local art scene, and I've I've gotten to know quite a few over the years. I've gotten to know quite a few artists, and that's been great. I, you know, once upon a time when I first was first starting out, I kind of lamented that that I, you know, um, my 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 husband isn't an artist, so um, you know, and, and my circle of friends here um, weren't necessarily artists, so. You know, I, I kind of lamented that I, I, I didn't really know many artists and, um, I, you know, I, um, and how I was I going to get into that gallery, you know, to that art scene. Um, but I found that the more I got involved in things, the more I got into groups and, um, 
you know, just kind of got myself out there and, you know, um, I don't get to go to many um, openings and shows as I'd like to. I, you know, it's, it's, it's still hard with, you know, three kids and, you know, family and everything. But, um, you know, when I can, I'll, I'll go to openings or, or events and um, get, to, get to meet people. And I think as, as my circle has widened, um, my awareness of, of the artists have, have widened. And um, there's just such a wealth of, um, of talent here in our city. Um, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, so huh, I hope that's um, given you a, a good overview of, of who I am and what I do. Um, and, um, you know, f feel free to reach out and let me know if there's anything else you ever want to know about. Um, this is the last video in this um, open house series. I think what I'm going to do is my, my open house ends at the end of today, tonight. Um, probably, you know, it might be tomorrow morning because, yeah. Um, anyway, it, it's going to be closing soon. I think I'm going to leave these videos up, though, for a little bit longer and eventually maybe um, um, hook them over to my blog so that they can be seen more. And um, I hope you've enjoyed my open house if you've had a chance to, to look at things. If not, um, you know, there's still a little bit of time. And um, feel free to reach out. And thank you so much for this opportunity. I've really enjoyed this. This has been a great, I don't know, experiment. And I've, or I've, I've enjoyed it. So thank you so much.